We are continuing to track what has now become Hurricane Isazias. Good afternoon, I'm Desmond Saunders coming to you live from our ZNS studios, providing live full team coverage of this system. We can tell you that a hurricane warning is now in effect for the entire Bahamas as Hurricane Isazias bears down on our country. Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean joins us. Good afternoon, Basil. Tell us how intense is the system and reiterate for us what islands are going to be impacted. Well, Desmond, let me first of all say that we have dropped the uh, hurricane warnings for the Turks and Caicos Islands and the island of Inagua in the southeast Bahamas. We maintain uh, hurricane warnings for the remainder of the Bahamas from the northwest right down to uh, Mayaguana. And Mayaguana, hopefully, we will drop that in our next uh, bulletin. But uh, the warnings continue at uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, the uh, hurricane center was located in the center of circulation at 22.2 degrees north, longitude 75.2 degrees west. That puts the center uh, some uh, 76 miles to the west southwest of Crooked Island. And it is moving towards the northwest at 16 miles per hour. The sustained winds are now down to 75 miles per hour from that 80 that we had about six hours ago. And it's maintaining that 75 knot uh, uh, speed. So that is uh, certainly good. It is now spreading those tropical storm force winds across Long Island, heading into the Exuma. So these two islands will start to experience some heavy tropical storm force winds over the next uh, several hours, also with some heavy rain showers accompanying that as well. And uh, repeating the coordinates at 2 o'clock, the center of circulation was at 22.2 degrees north, longitude 75.2 west, moving west, uh, moving northwest, pardon me, at 16 miles per hour. And that's, uh, you have it, we'll have more. More details coming up later in the newscast. All right, thank you very much, Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean, joining us live in studio. We'll expect another briefing from the National Emergency Management Agency in the next hour. Nehmer and the Ministry of Health will hold a joint press conference on the hurricane and COVID-19. Health officials will also present the latest update and figures on COVID in the Bahamas. They will also shed more light on the three latest COVID-19 deaths in the Bahamas. That meeting is scheduled for 3 p.m and will be carried live on the ZNS television and radio network. Well, due to the gravity of the situation, the National Emergency Management Agency's Emergency Operations Center has been activated. NEMA representatives then are in place to monitor the system and to ensure the public receives timely and accurate information. The center has been, has been rearranged to allow for social distancing and other safety measures in keeping with protocols pertaining to the COVID-19 pandemic. We can also tell you that at this hour, shelters have also been activated. The prime minister last evening announcing a relaxation of curfews and lockdowns to allow for storm preparations. The weekday curfew then has been pushed from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., ending at 5 a.m., and this will remain in effect until further notice. This weekend, food stores, water depots, pharmacies, and gas stations will be permitted to open on Saturday until 8 p.m., the same in the case of hardware stores. Further persons will be permitted to move around to prepare for the storm and to respond to any emergency during and after the storm. The Prime Minister also stressing, though, that as the Bahamas is in the surge of COVID-19 cases, it is now even more critical that everyone practices COVID-19 prevention guidelines during this hurricane, and that's wearing masks, practicing physical distancing, washing your hands, and sanitizing. The period is not to be used for socializing and visiting family and friends. Over in central Andros, residents were busy for the most part of the day preparing for the hurricane. Local fishermen have also been securing their vessels. Chief Counselor David Nemore, out on Bearing Point, spoke with the administrator about preparations there. Uh, so this is not really bad here. We've probably experienced maybe 12 mile an hour winds here with 12 mile an hour winds with uh, clear sky so far. So it doesn't look so bad at this at this moment. I know in the future we'll be hoping for something or looking for something more or strong, stronger winds. So I know it's going to pick up. But as for now, we don't experience so bad conditions right now. Now, I know you're not a commercial fisherman, but as we approach the 1st of August, um, tell us what is the effect that this storm would be impacting this part of Andros at this time of the month? Yes, definitely. The 1st of August is the, the beginning of the lobster season. Uh, we know that there are some commercial boats in this area. Uh, so definitely it's going to be impact this area and the mostly, I would guess, the mangrove area, the northern areas, 
where they do have more commercial fishing areas that are being factored because these folks don't have the opportunity to go there and get their first catch for the season. So with, with the economy the way it is due to COVID-19, definitely this will impact the local economy of our area and those other districts. This so, so what are some of the things the fishermen have done to prepare for this storm? Well, definitely everybody's now, as you can see, I am a bone fish guy. And all the boats are up out of the water. So starting from yesterday, all the, the fishermen in the area and the bone fishing guy, because this area is really a bone fishing area, and uh, they've been taking up their boats out of the water from yesterday sometimes. So they are taking precautions. See, people are ready in our area. Everybody's battling up their house and everybody's taking up the necessary precautions. The administrator for Ackland, Crooked Allen and Long Key, Mr. Gilbert Camp, telling ZNS News that they experienced severe weather and heavy rain earlier today as the storm passed the Allen around mid-morning. Well, Camp expressed concern about residents in Salina Point. It is, it is a low-lying area and heavy flooding is expected as a hurricane passes over the Allen. Well, having gotten the first effect of Hurricane Isaias, wind and rain, Inagua residents should be in the all clear at this point. Here's Administrator Marlon Leary on the situation earlier today. We have winds uh, gusting anywhere from 25 miles per hour to maybe up to 40 on the coast maximum at this time. I don't know if even though it's that strong, but and we have light rain. We've been having light rain most of the night. But right now, personally, we're in good head, Matthew. Tom. At about 5.30 BPL, just, um, they shut off the electricity supply just as a precautionary measure after the winds would have gotten up to about 30 miles per hour. So they would have taken the precaution and shut it down. And as soon as they go out and do their assessment, they would put it back on. But there are no reports of any power lines down or anything like that. There are no reports of any damage anywhere. Defense force, uh, along with the police force, they were all doing their checks through the, through the night. No problem to report. Our shelter was open. We had one shelter open. I was at St. Phillips Anglican Church, the, the Santa at the church. We had the volunteers there, along with defense force officers, but nobody reported into the shelter. So we were relatively doing well. It almost seems like it's getting back to normal very quickly because at first sunlight, the police had to go and tell some people, hey, stop driving up and up. People were just driving up and down. I guess everybody was curious, you know, because it really wasn't any challenges through the night or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Great. So, well, yeah, basically, that. yeah, so it was, I guess in another two or three hours, we'd be back to normal. Full team coverage of Hurricane Isaias continues after this.
Welcome back. We're getting a release, a press release from the Bahamas Power and Light. And at 8 p.m., there will be a controlled shutdown of certain high-risk areas in New Providence or in the New Providence grid. However, only in that Hurricane Isaias maintains its current conditions and New Providence sees sustained, sustained winds of 40 miles per hour. In the event storm conditions deteriorate, there will be a second controlled shutdown, this one targeting flood-prone areas, namely Pinewood Gardens, Marshall Road, Yamacross Shores, Winton Highway, Gilberts Hill, Twinham Heights, Nasser East, North and South for Paul Track, Vista Marina, St. Albums Drive, Downtown and Nassau Village. Once power is cut, it will remain off until it is safe to re-energize. Control shutdowns were executed in Maguana at 12.15 a.m. and Inagua at 5 a.m. Power has since been restored in the latter island. Now, BPL is also advising that regular updates will be issued via social media and regular new outlets in order to keep customers abreast of the latest developments. That statement coming from BPL. Well, now in preparation for the potential arrival of Hurricane Isaias, Doctors Hospital, Human Resource, Corporate Finance and Business Offices will be closed to walk-in customers today. In the event, you have to contact these offices. You're advised to call or give them an email. Crime news for you now. A quarrel between three male relatives turns deadly. Police on the scene yesterday of a fatal stabbing incident on Lawton Street, Nassau Village. Police press liaison officer Audley Pritish telling Zedatus News the three men got into an argument. Tensions flared. All males received stab wounds. One of the men died on the scene. The other two men are listed in stable condition at the Princess Margaret Hospital. Press liaison officer Audley Peters. Altercation among three male relatives that resulted in all of the males receiving injuries to their bodies. One of the males succumbed to the injury that he received and EMS was called in. On their arrival, they examined the male and pronounced him lifeless on the scene. However, they had to take two of the males to PMH, where they are presently in stable condition. Now we have an updated list for you, shelter list for New Providence. The shelters list here in New Providence has been updated, as I indicated. And your options include Berea, Seventh-day Adventist Church on Blue Hill Road South, Canon Neal E. Roach Hall, Holy Cross Anglican Church, Highbury Park, Epworth Hall, Ebenezer Methodist Church on Shirley Street. This is to be used for homeless and disabled people will be accommodated at that facility. Hillview, Seventh Adventist Church, Tony Williams Darling Highway, New Bethlehem Baptist Church, Independence Drive, New Providence Community Center, Blake Road, Pilgrim Baptist Church, St. James Road, Remnant Tabernacle of Praise, Carmichael Road, Reverend Dr. O.A. Pratt Educational Building, St. John's Native Baptist Church, Augusta and Meeting Streets, the Salvation Army, Mackey Street. That is the updated list, shelters list for you in New Providence. We are continuing to track Hurricane Isaias. And as we said now, it's now a hurricane. Basil Dean joins us live. Basil, my concern now is Nassau. How is the city going to be impacted by all of this? Well, Desmond, uh, we will get uh, the brunt of it uh, during the early morning hours between 3 a.m. and 7, 8 a.m. Uh, Saturday morning. That is when we expect the core of the uh, hurricane force winds to pass just between New Providence and Andros. Andros perhaps will receive a little bit more than New Providence, but we certainly will get some very strong tropical storm force winds probably gusting up the hurricane uh, force, but it will be briefly uh, lived. We expect about five to six hours uh, under tropical storm uh, conditions, and uh, then the system is expected to push off towards the northwest and heading uh, again to the west end of Grand Bahama. So the scenario is panning out as the forecast uh, predicted from yesterday, maintaining that uh, northwest uh, track. The forward speed is now at 16 miles per hour. The sustained winds have been down to 75 miles per hour, and once it remains uh, just around there, we should be pretty much okay, but expect some heavy uh, rains, some heavy winds during the uh, uh, late night and early morning hours. Earlier today, I spoke with... Uh I spoke with um, uh, Mr. Morse in uh, Crooked Island, and uh, he indicated then that they were experiencing some heavy rain showers, but for the most part, 
the island uh, experienced a moderate to light uh, continuous rain. The same thing uh, for Inagua, they've been getting some uh, light uh, consistent uh, rain and that system is moving away. So we have dropped the hurricane warnings for Inagua and the Turks and Caicos Islands, but the remainder of the Bahamas remains under a hurricane watch until the all clear is given. And uh, repeating the coordinates at two o'clock, the center of circulation was at 22.2 degrees north, longitude 75.2 west. That puts it about uh, 76 miles west southwest of Crooked Island, moving northwest at 16 miles per hour. And as we told you already, sustained winds holding at 75 miles per hour. Thank you very much, Chief Meteorologist Basil Dean, joining us live in studio. And that has been your update. Tune in to the ZNS Network for the very latest as we track Hurricane Isisius. I'm Desmond Saunders. Good afternoon. <laughs>